Hassan's math channel. Um, in today's video, in this video, sorry, I'm going to be answering question number one from the June 2019, the GCE paper. Um, this was the old code for it before, before they changed to the international A-level, but the, the syllabus is basically the same. So there's no problem if you do these old GCE papers. But like from, I think from June 2014 until June 2019, they had them both running at the same time. So you've like two different papers, one IAL, one GCE. Okay, so this is the GCE June 2019 paper, not the IAL one, but the same syllabus. All right, now it says question number one, in this question, I and J are horizontal unit vectors due east and due north respectively. It says three forces, PI and two J Newtons, three I minus Q J Newtons and QI plus 2PJ Newtons, uh, where P and Q are constants, act on a particle of mass 2 kilograms. The forces cause the particle to move with acceleration I minus 3J meters per second squared. First of all, we've got to find the direction of the acceleration, giving your answer as a bearing to the nearest degree. So we know the acceleration is given by the vector 1 minus 3. So we've got to describe this direction of this acceleration um, as a bearing. Okay, so that's what we have to do here. So what we do is we think about, let's say it starts from this point here. Okay, it's going to go up, it's going to go one and then down. So let's say, say it starts from this point here. Supposing that's where the bearing starts. So you're going to have a line which goes one to the right and three down. So it'll look something like this. Okay, it's just a sketch. Okay, so this will be the direction of the vector. Okay, this is basically... Um, one unit to the right and three units down. Okay, one unit to the right and three units down. That's how you end up over there. Now, we've got to find this as a bearing. So we've got to find it from the north line. A bearing is always measured from the north line and always measured in the clockwise direction. Always measured in the clockwise direction. So the bearing is measured from here in the clockwise direction. So the vector A is going from there to there. This is the angle which is the bearing. This angle here is the bearing which describes the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so now uh, what we need to know is, well, this must of course, of course be 90 degrees. Okay, This is one unit to the right and three units down. Okay. So I need to find what this angle is here. I'm going to call this angle theta. All right. What we have to find is the whole angle, uh, which is from there all the way to there. But we're looking for theta now. Okay. If I do theta, I know the bearing. The bearing that I'm looking for is going to be equal to 90 degrees plus theta. So we have to find what theta is. Now we know that in this right angle triangle, because this is east, this is um, south, just like that, yeah, we know that the tangent of the angle theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 1. So therefore, we can say theta is equal to inverse tan of 3. So theta is equal to, so we take the calculator and we make sure that we are in degree mode. Okay. And we pray, press inverse tan of 3, which gives us 71.565 degrees. So 71.565 degrees. Okay. Okay, so we have 71.56 degrees. Okay, and we th therefore we can say that the bearing, the bearing is 90 plus 71.565. So we take the answer that we got in our calculator, and we add 90 to it, and that gives us 161.565, 161.565. Bearings should always be given to the nearest whole number, so therefore we can say it's equal to 162 degrees. That's the bearing that describes the direction of the acceleration, okay, to the nearest degree. Tells us the nearest degree. We should do that anyway, even if it didn't say it. We do it according to um, the nearest degree for bearings, unless otherwise stated here. They stated the nearest degree, so that's fine. Okay, so there's part A done of this question. Now, 
Now for part B. Um, this is actually a video recorded a bit later than part A because it's a correction. Part B, um, there was a mistake made where I had, I think I'd put Q i plus 2 q j when i copied the vectors down and of course that caused the answer to be wrong which normally i would check before uploading but i think i was in a hurry that day so i didn't check it but thank you very much to mr hassan raza for pointing out that mistake so um that old video now is going to be probably gone edited and this will replace it so here we have three forces p i plus 2 j newtons three i minus q j newtons and q i plus 2 P, J, Newtons, where P and Q are constants, they act on a particle of mass 2 kilograms. The forces cause the particle to move with the acceleration I minus 3 J meters per second squared. Find the value of P and the value of Q. So basically what we're going to use here is the fact that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So we know the resultant force in terms of the mass, which is 2, times acceleration, which is 1, negative 3. That's the resultant force in terms of the mass and the result and the, and the, res the acceleration that's caused by the resultant forces. Now the resultant forces, the resultant forces also found by adding together these three forces, force 1, force 2, and force, force 3. This is force 1, this is force 2, this is force 3. The three forces added together give us a resultant force. So the sum of those three forces will give us this resultant force. So let's work out what they are in terms of P and Q. So you have P, um, P, I, and 2J, plus 3I minus QJ, plus QI and 2PJ. I think that's what I made, I did wrong before, last time. I wrote down here 2Q instead of 2P. So you have P plus Q plus 3, that's P plus Q, Q plus 3. Uh, here I've got 2 um, minus Q, so I can write this as 2P minus Q plus 2. Now I can set up an equation. These two are the same. They're both the resultant force. Both of these are the resultant force. So I can say that P plus Q plus 3 and 2P minus Q plus 2 equals 2 and negative 6. Just multiplying that out. So that's the resultant force in terms of the mass times acceleration. That's the resultant force in terms of the sum of the three forces um, that cause that resultant force. So now I can set up the equations from I. So I know that P plus Q plus 3 equals 2. So that leads me to the equation P plus Q is equal to negative 1. So that's equation 1. And then from the J components, I have 2P minus Q plus 2 equals negative 6. So that gives me the equation 2P minus Q equals negative 8. That's equation number 2. If I add the two equations together, because I have this, uh, the same coefficient but different signs in front of the Q that will be eliminated, so I'm going to have 3P is equal to negative 9. If I add those, those become 0. Therefore, P is equal to negative 3. And I know that P plus Q equals 1. I can replace the P with negative 3. Negative 3 plus Q equals 1. So I have to, um, equals negative 1, sorry, be careful, P plus Q equals negative 1, so easy to make mistakes here, so you add minus 3 to negative 1, that's going to be minus 3, you add minus, sorry, you add 3 to both sides, so minus 3 plus, minus 1 plus 3, sorry, is equal to 2, so I'm jumping a step there, okay, so you end up with Q is equal to minus 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. So you end up with P equals negative 3 and Q equals 2. Those are your solutions. You can make sure that they actually give you the right resultant vector. You have P is negative 3 and Q equals 2. Okay, if you put that in here, you're going to have negative 3 um, plus 3, which is 0, plus 2. So that gives you 2. That's correct. And then when you put in here, you've got 2 minus 2, which is 0, plus minus 6, which is exactly correct. So those values get you this vector exactly. Okay, so you can make sure to, that you've got the right values of P and Q in the end. And that concludes this question, which is question part B from question 1 of the June 2019, the GCE Mechanics 1 um, paper. 
Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist in this area over here. Other questions from Mac, uh, vectors in MacM1 can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And in the description underneath the video, you can find links to other um, videos that you might find useful. Thank you for watching and see you soon.